But if you'll listen to me for just a few moments. I got Will Williamson. That's his actual fucking name. <laughs> <laughs> on Skype. Father Funk. <coughs> and, yo, yo, uh, yo. We're gonna we've been working on this track for ages and um like I don't know, like summer and stuff happened and then we never really finished it. So like I wanna try and finish it up. Um so I've got like my the last project that I had open here. And I think you've done some changes after that, but like, maybe we should just have a listen to this, and then, cause, and then we'll listen to yours, and then we'll see like, what we should do and change and stuff. But yeah. <coughs> it turned out pretty good, though. I reckon. Oh hell yeah! Have you been playing it at any festivals? Not yet, no, I think you only sent it to me a while after Shambhala or something. Damn, what a, what a dick move. <laughs> <laughs> keep, it, keep it exclusive, my own tune. <laughs> I gotta turn the volume up. Cool, it's full volume already. <clears throat> That's pretty good. Might be a little bit too long, maybe. I don't know. And then, like, there's a chill section. And then there's another breakdown, which is basically the same as the one at the start. It's a little bit different than the uh, second drop, which is, like, quite a bit different. Etc. All right, so let's fucking open up the one that you sent. Like, Father Funk's having a fiddle. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking bet you As are, always. mate. Huh? As always. <laughs> <laughs> Solo fiddle. Um, <laughs> do I want to save this before? No, I don't. <clears throat> Have you ever fucking saved over a project that you're working on with something else? Uh, I can't say I have. Fuck, man. One time I, um... Jesus Christ, my phone just went apeshit. Uh, one time I was, like, working on a track, and then I had another idea, and so I deleted everything except for the drums and started writing another tune, and then I accidentally hit Control-S and saved over the top. Oh, fuck. Yeah, I know. I was, I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what's what's different in this? I think you put in some... I think it was mainly just the intro. I thought we could have more of like a chill intro so it comes in kind of like you know, the, the main drums come in at the drop rather than straight away kind of thing. Yeah. And then also so you can sort of mix it into that basic clarinet riff that I recorded. Yeah. Let's have a listen. Yeah, I reckon, like, that clarinet, <clears throat> it's so fucking loud or something, like, it just, it, like, catches me off guard, you know what I mean, like, suddenly it's just, it's like, oh, 
and then suddenly it's just like like super loud I don't know um Maybe like we could turn it down and add like a reverse echo to it so it like introduces it a bit nicer. Yeah, definitely. And probably get rid of the kind of sample vocal thing that's over the top of it at the same time. Yeah, like this Houston quote. Yeah, yeah let's yeah. try that. Oh yeah, that feels a lot more natural. Yeah. Let's that works. let's do a quick like um reverse uh, reverse reverb on this thing. So I'm just going to put this down here. We'll just want to reverb like the very beginning of it. So reverse that. Um, what the fuck? Control J and then reverse that and then drop a reverb on. Turn that shit full wear, turn the decay time up. Pow pow. Yeah, and I'll just like freeze that. I'm just gonna flatten it actually. Yeah, and then we can just take this, put it up here, reverse that. And this might like introduce the sound a bit better maybe. <coughs> maybe like the clarinet just overall needs a bit of reverb. And it's like too loud as well, I think. Turn it down a bit, like 3 dB or something. Maybe I should put this like so that it doesn't go past the sort of that kind of boom there. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, that's a little bit nicer. Um, maybe like a slight ping pong delay on the on the clarinet. Really subtle one. All right. Are you feeling that? Yeah, man. Sweet. Oh, fuck. I yeah, can't nice. read. I can't read the chat. People are saying shit. Sorry, I'm not reading the chat. Someone's saying Dropbox is shafting your stream again. Oh, fuck. What the hell is this shit? Gmail integration? Whatever. Oh, fucking hell. Um, what's going on with the stream? Is it, not work is it working for you, Will? Yeah, it's working. Yeah, yeah. I don't, don't know what this guy's saying. <clears throat> it's full of shit. Maybe he lives <laughs> in like a poor country with like <laughs> <laughs> with like dial-up internet. Sorry, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's palm yeet. <laughs> is your outfit... Oh, fuck. Ah, oh, put the output on the wrong fucking channel as well. Sorry, guys. Okay, now you can hear it. <clears throat> I'm going to save, save this as um, <laughs> version 6. Um, Slink is having a fiddle with <laughs> Father Funk. <laughs> <laughs> there Sounds we go. That's there we go. That's pretty accurate. Um, sorry, man. I fucking every time Dropbox goes on, it drops out for a bit. All right, fuck. Yeah, I'll just pause thinking. So Dropbox is not doing shit now. <clears throat> um, all right. Anyway, fucking. Thanks for letting me know about that, Palmute. Um. 
What's up, better sounding on drugs? <laughs> People have the fucking weirdest name. There's like this dude who comes in sometimes and he has like a name that um is just like a bunch of random characters and, and numbers. I'm like, what the hell does your name mean? He's like, I used a password generator to, to find my fucking username. What the fuck is wrong with that guy? <laughs> Where's your fancy follow sound? I followed you and I feel let down. I don't know. Maybe, did you follow me? What, 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 what on, on this? On uh, the this, stream? This fucking dude on, on chat. Yeah, when someone follows me, like, they, it makes a little sound. I don't know. Maybe it fucking didn't work. Should be working. <laughs> Anyways, fuck, we're getting distracted here. We've got to work on this track. <laughs> Come on, guys. So this all sounds like pretty much how I left it. And then we got this clarinet here. i got to say, Will, I wasn't, like, the biggest fan of the clarinet. But we'll see if we can work it in because it is a collaboration and you like it. <laughs> you like the clarinet. I don't like the clarinet. We'll yeah, I can and... see how over the kind of heavier sections it doesn't work as well. But I think it sounds like a nice thing to use as the kind of breakdown, yeah. kind of hooky riff thing that's kind of like, kind of characterizes the track a bit more. It's, not, it's like catchy and but then because it's such a switch up at the drop, it doesn't necessarily need to come back so much. Yeah, let's hear what it sounds well like. With that intro bit and stuff. Let's hear what it sounds like in this section here, because there's like lots of bass going on. So. I like this one hit there, like the middle one. But these two, maybe we can get rid of them, because I like how the way this like leads into the sax. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Palm Mute reckons that we should process the clarinet to shit for the drops. <laughs> <laughs> No, we're not going to do that. Um, I think just I think that sounds alright like that, eh? Yeah, yeah. I kind of want them sitting a little bit back in that section, and then in this section, I don't think they work here because I've got that solo going on. Where's that solo coming yeah, yeah, from? Yeah, yeah, suck it off for that bit for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Bring the clarinet back in here. Yeah, for sure. It's it's in for the second section. Or do you reckon like right at the beginning of that breakdown? Yeah, maybe. I mean, play it through. Because you've got it, you've got it sitting in the second half. Let's see what it sounds like. I guess it's nice to have that race that can't be more dead. What's that? As it gets, it's quite nice to have that sort of section there where it really does kind of break down yeah. completely for a bit. Yeah, for sure. Because like, if you were DJing. And you wanted to like mix out halfway through the track, you could do it there. Yeah, it's true, yeah. Adds to that spacey vibe as well. <laughs> duck solo. <laughs> That's what Palm Mute reckons that solo sounds like <laughs> sounds like a duck. Anyway, so it like breaks down. And then this, this vocal comes back in. I think I'm gonna fade that a bit so it doesn't come in so suddenly. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, we can recycle this fucking sound here. The reverse reverb. Doo -doo -doo -doo. 
<laughs> I'd maybe take off that last little bit of clarinet before the drop there. Feels like it doesn't need to be there. Yeah. Kind of let the little bits work and the very last little phrase. Yeah. So kind of more like this. Yeah, I like that. Um, and then you bring it in here again. I think it, it totally does not work there. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't need it there. It's way too busy with the bass line. Yeah, definitely. We could add it in on the outro somewhere. <clears throat> or should we just have the outro without any clarinet? Um... Well, how's it, how's it sound at the moment? What have we got going on at the end? We got this. Oh yeah, it's like chill, chill section with the trumpet. I kind of like that though. I might even remove that sax. Just because like if you were mixing it. Yeah. I reckon we could end the song like right here. I reckon that should be the end of the song right there. Yeah. Yeah, I think it definitely works without the clarinet too. It kind of brings focus to that guitar part a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I reckon like let's just delete this last little section. Because the song was getting a bit long, like it was already fucking four and a half minutes. So now we got four minutes which is a little bit better we could probably yeah, cool. delete part of the intro or something oh uh, actually what would i do if i was djing this i think we should get rid of the houston quote at the very beginning just yeah. because if i was djing maybe that, move it to over the end but i guess that's another part we want to mix out again isn't it yeah um maybe just not right at the beginning here Okay. Like in the sec, like when when the big drums come in on the in the intro. You know, something like this, and then like the Houston quote comes in. Yeah. Yeah, that's way better. Cool. So yeah, if I was DJing it, like I reckon that Houston coat would kind of piss me off. <laughs> right in the beginning, yeah, there, over like the little drums. Um, sweet man. So I think like I think we might be done already. Fuck, I don't know. Yeah, it's sounding like that way almost. Eh? Have you turned the drums down a little bit towards the start? You know that the the full big big fat drums are they the same volume at the start as they are when it drops? Because maybe don't need to be quite so loud. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. Actually, I might I remove I might remove some of the drums in the very beginning here. Like, it's just maybe this bongo one or something. Yeah. Yeah, so give it a bit more intro. And then you reckon just like turn the drum meat channel down a bit? Like by, yeah. like, by like 3 dB or something? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, right. <clears throat> I'm just going to set up a quick rack. Max zero, minimum negative three. Then I can just go like that. Wait, I did that round the wrong way. <laughs> there we go. So 
So that's the drums, negative 3 dB. Yeah, that sounds much better. Um, pardon me, it's saying, do you have a ton of guitar leaves or do you just get someone to make them? Um, yeah, I just get Father Funk to do it. <laughs> <laughs> you, you recorded all yeah, these guitars, didn't you? Yeah, all the guitars I recorded myself. Well, I recorded everything, but the guitars, me, and then the sax and bass clarinet and some friends of mine. Yeah, they sound great, man. Yeah, you got to, like, record more guitars, I reckon. Oh, yeah, well, that's, yeah, the album's a lot more kind of this sort of shit. Yeah. I do love making bootlegs, but for the album, I've obviously done a bit more of that kind of shit. Um, what the heck is happening here with this effects channel and stuff? Do we want, do we want that off? Yeah, maybe it's a bit too much. What's this? <laughs> like an epic riser in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Alright, I'm just going to delete that channel. <laughs> Must have been like an idea that we never used or something. Um, cool. I think the only thing I want to do now is like just work on the balance of everything, like, mast like mix down stuff. And like... This might sound completely insane, but what I've been doing lately is putting the sub in with the drum bus. Alright. That's a cool idea. It's probably like a really bad idea. I'm not even sure, <clears throat> to be honest. Sup, Hacker Man? <laughs> uh, yeah, so I think I'm just going to throw it in the drum bus. We'll see if we can... Like, I think I made this sub like a long time ago and it probably sucks. So, I'm just going to listen to it. I don't think we're doing any side chaining whatsoever either. Oh, there's a little bit of side chaining on the brakes group. Um, but you're happy with like the structure of how it's how it's sounding now? Yeah, I think yeah, the structure's sounding a lot better now, I think. Cool, man. Um well, I might just like work on the mix down for a while on stream or whatever and uh, I might do like some additional processing on the bass like all this all this stuff yeah I think the main thing I noticed with the bounce you sent me was just the yeah all the kind of top layers need to be the same level kind of thing yeah on the bass yeah and that was kind of that was kind of it really because um I've got like a shitty compressor here and I really need to just go through and make sure that everything's like roughly the same vo like volume with all those sounds. Might take a I while. I think a lot of the sounds I from my stems sound quite dry as well because I'd use like a reverb send on them but then when you send stems it obviously sounds dry because it sends the reverb as a separate stem. Yeah. So maybe some of like the synth parts and guitar parts might need like a touch of reverb or just something to give it a bit of width or... Whatever. There's a reverb that's automating on here. Oh, is that the very beginning? Yeah, like this um this first breakdown, I I get kinda bored of this synth, so I almost feel like we should like delete it delete a part of it. Like listen yeah, to this. Was, uh, uh, yeah, maybe just say this. That could be kind of cool, like on the dance floor, you're just like... It's fucking weird, clarinet. <laughs> I don't know, I think that sounds a little bit too empty now, maybe. Too empty? Yeah, maybe. I mean, maybe, hmm. cut, maybe cut the synth bit before that bit, I don't know. Maybe just so it's like the first kind of dip, 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 instead of having the dip, dip. Oh, yeah. Like just, otherwise it's just the same pattern, isn't it, for ages and ages? Yeah. Something like... Like this. Yeah, something like that. Maybe I'll do something weird to it and like, um, just fuck with it. 
Someone's saying filter it in, which could be a good shout for that. Yeah, part. that's what I was thinking as well. Oh, is that um, Koch as in like Koch? Yeah, is that is that Sam? Probably this is. Better sounding on drugs, this jammy jam in E. I don't know what fucking key it's in. Probably in. Uh, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I think it is in E. C, D, E. Pretty sure it's E. Why well, you want to like record some the sound of you jerking off in in the key of E to like throw on <laughs> <laughs> throw on the project. Um. <clears throat> yeah. Cool. Yeah. Let's do like a little filter or something. Um. So like, what are we gonna do with this song? You want to put it on your album, yeah? Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. I've been dragging it out for a while, but we'll get there. How many, do you have like a bunch of other songs ready already or? Yeah, I've got about eight or nine tunes now, but I'm just kind of waiting on vocalists and stuff like that. Yeah. So you're going to go for like full 10 tracks on the album? Uh, Yeah, something like that. I mean, yeah, we'll see. I'm going to try and either just keep making tunes until there's 10 really good ones or I'll cut it down to like eight of really good tracks or, Yeah. Just go for like eight good ones and two shitty ones. <laughs> I'll like, you know what? We'll just just take one of your good ones and speed it up to like two hundred BPM and just put that on the album too. Yeah, Gabba remix. Yeah. Bonus track. Oomp, 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 oomp. <laughs> anyway, let's see what this filter thing sounds like. Oh, that's too low. <laughs> That fucking other synth sound is like way loud as well. Maybe I should filter that. Yeah, too. I don't know. Yeah, I think the filtering in that bit kind of again makes it sound a bit too like there's a bit too little going on almost. Too little going on. I think it's just I uh, it's a bit loud there. It's like ding 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 ding. It's like oh, that, so. that bit. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, the synth we just cut up. Like when, now we filtered it, it again. Sounds a bit kind of empty in that part. Hmm. Why don't we do the opposite? Um, and or maybe or maybe filter that section, but don't have it cut down. No, I got And don't filter the other section in the intro, but have that bit cut down. Does that make sense? Bro, I got an idea. I'm gonna legato all the notes, and then when it filters oh, yeah, up, it'll cool sound idea. like it'll sound like way, like way fat. <laughs> And like, what we'll do is, um, how are we vibratoing this, by the way? Is it on the? I think it's on operator. Oh, okay, <clears throat> it's on analog. Um, yeah, like I'll just set it up so that the vibrato slowly comes in, and then like drops at the beginning of the next chord. So it's like. <laughs> Oh, that's not enough really, is it? Yeah. It'll sound cool. I'll massage it until it sounds cool. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. I never thanked that dude for following me, whoever that was. Thank you for following me. Um, I'm going to try and record this and put this on YouTube as well. So you should, like, like, comment, and subscribe on YouTube. Doop do. <laughs> YouTube. Oh, did you see that fucking video I put up on um on my fan page yesterday? Well, with your mad skills. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty dope. It's so ridiculous. All right. Oh, I don't know. That doesn't really work, does it? Unless we, like, continue yeah, that on. Know. If we continued on to the next section. Um, yeah, let's just rewind. Rewind. Uh, what if we put, like, a mad, like an insane amount of delay on it? 
I can I really shit I have a shit ton of ping pong. <laughs> Nah. It does de like I don't mind how it sounds like that, but you think it's too empty? I like it like that, I reckon. Yeah, I'll try try it again. Just play just play it again through that whole kind of build right. section. Alright. <laughs> Better sounding on drugs says that clarinet riff makes me feel like I'm stuck in an elevator listening to elevator music on acid. <laughs> exactly what I was going for. I'm, yeah. That's how that's how Father Funk recorded it. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. yeah. It builds a bit more tension, doesn't it? And, yeah. Uh, it still yeah, drops it really hard. So. Cool. Yeah, it still drops. Um, all right, I'm going to work on this sub a bit because I don't know what the fuck I was doing here with this sub. <clears throat> I've been doing my subs a little differently lately. Like, I usually like go for uh, triangle waves and I have like one octave higher than the other um, mm. in massive, but... I think like just going sine wave and having like no yeah, processing. Yeah, that's what I normally do. Just, just one, yeah, one layer of one sine wave. Because otherwise it like kind of messes with the bass, like the deep sub. When you hear it on a big system, yeah. it like messes a little bit. Uh, someone some, reckons... Yeah, some tracks it works, but it, yeah. Uh, Beat the Juice Funk reckons it sounds better with um, the uh, Houston sample in the breakdown, uh, which I removed. But like... The problem with that so is maybe it, have it in the in the bit after, like when it initially breaks down to so that what we were just doing there, where it filters, and then it kind of starts building up with the filtered bass sound. You can maybe put it over that bit. Yeah, like it doesn't sound good with the clarinet, man. Like. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's just too much going on, isn't like, it? Like, yeah, the s small brains to handle. Yeah, there's too much shit going on there. But if we put it over here. Yeah. I gotta trim the end off so that. Just cut out. Do we want the. Uh, it's uh, it's looking good in there, or do we just want to like trim it right back so it's like. Yeah, I think they're looking good, but it's cool. But maybe just chop it down a bit so it doesn't come in that in that gap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear what you're saying. Like, like go like this. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, that sounds cool. All right, so the sub. Back to the sub here. So we got the sub cut at 106 hertz for some reason. Let's go 100 hertz. And the whole bass group channel. Uh, all these channels are cut at 106. You know, um, like isolating frequencies, right? If you use mm -hmm. a, if you use an EQ, and you have a cut, like a low cut at 100 hertz, and then a high cut at 100 hertz. You like end up with a little dip around like ninety hertz in the in the waveform. Yeah. All right. So like, I just I just learned this because I was like, oh man, like you cut it a hundred hertz and then you like put everything back at a hundred hertz and everything should be sweet, right? But apparently, it's not as good as you think it. Like it's not as accurate as as that, even though you got that really mm. sharp like curve. So. I think like the better way to do it is to use a multiband dynamics because it has built in like crossover EQs that are really accurate and you just like yeah. solo solo like the low channel and then you can set that to 100 hertz or whatever you like and then on the other on the ones that you want everything above 100 hertz I think you can just set the low to 100 again and then solo oh can you not solo 
Hmm. You can't tell her too. Wait a minute. Oh, you know what? You just put it in a rack and duplicate it. And have one solo in the mids and one solo in the highs. Oh, actually, you can just turn the highs up to... Oh, how, how's, what's the best way to do this? Can I just turn that off? Does, do I still get bass in there if I do that? Turn off what? Um. Uh, I'm looking at the multiband dynamics. Alright. Alright, palm mute That's reckons... It's delayed on the stream. Whoa. I can hear your uh, laptop turning into a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Through the mic. Say that again. I said I can hit. I can hear your laptop turning into a vacuum cleaner. It's like <laughs> it's like cranking out the heat. Um, there is another way. Um, that I saw on Mr. Bill's channel. Um, and this is like probably the most accurate way to do it. Where <clears throat> you grab an EQ. Um, and then uh, you fil you do the opposite of what you want. So you filter like 100 hertz and up. And then you stick that in a group. And then you duplicate that um, without, without an EQ. And put a utility on that channel and phase invert it. Alright. That's a cool idea. So it like phase inverts everything like along the curve. So you end up with like an upside down curve the other way or something. I'm getting clicks out of this sub actually as well. Can you guys hear this up on, st on stream? I can hear it with my headphones on. But... Alright, cool. Yeah, that's cool. All right, so then we can do the opposite um, on these other channels. I'm probably just going to like nerd out um, on this stuff for a while. So if you wanted to like get going, bro, you can if you like, or you can hang out, hang out with us. <laughs> cool. Whatever you like, yeah, bro. Yeah, might as well. Might as well what? <laughs> <Man>. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Might as well cool. get the fuck out of here. <laughs> yes, you can't. Um, <laughs> enjoy to see you, Slink. Really kind. Hey, no worries, guy who can almost speak English. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I think I'm just going to go through and like make sure everything's like happening right on the EQ here. Probably want to EQ before the compressor. Ah, oh, it's always a tough call because, yeah, I'm going to go after the compressor. What do I have it on this one? Probably go after the filter as well. Um, have you been working on anything new lately, bro? Um, a little bit. Yeah, I've been. Uh so sofa surfing since about July, so I've not really had the same routine going down as I used to. But yeah, I've got a few bits and bobs going down. Just trying to get the album nailed, really. You've been doing what? Sorry. Sofa surfing. Oh, sofa surfing. <laughs> yeah, I've not actually had my own place since July, so. Are you um, in Leeds? You're not in I Leeds. I was in Leeds. I'm in Bristol at the moment, looking yeah. for a room. Yeah. 
Sweet, dude. That's going to be yeah, awesome. Yeah, it's not, not so easy, but it'll be cool on Skate Side Out. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, you can hang out with the Get a Funk crew and all them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a good crew, yeah. I think um, X-Ray Ted was telling me that um, the Get a Funk crew aren't managing him anymore. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah probably not. Are they just getting real busy or something? Um, I don't really know. I, I, I don't really, yeah, I don't really work so much with those guys anymore. The Get a Funk guys? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, you're like more, like you're you're managed by Finger Licking, hey? Uh, yeah, they, they do my bookings and then I've got separate management, but yeah, it's kind of, yeah, similar thing. Yeah, it's pretty cool. All right. Let's see if we can fucking tease the highs out of this bass line. There's actually like loads of clicks in here and shit that totally suck. <laughs> oh, it's going to take ages to fucking clip fade. At the edges of all these sounds. Oh my god. See, this is why you got to fucking fade the clips while you're writing the song. Yep. That's got a pretty fucking shitty cl click. Um, what are you guys talking about in chat? <clears throat> are you two in New Zealand? Oh, uh, yes, yes. Uh, me and yeah, you, bro, uh, yeah. we're both from yeah. New Zealand, yes. Fucking all blacks. We started out in a jazz bar. <laughs> playing jazz. Yeah. <laughs> with, my cous, with my cousin. Giving out free jazz. On the dick. Yep. Used Had a lot of people on a dick. Used to DJ, I bought my own dicks when I was uh, 15 <laughs> and DJ out in the dick. <laughs> all my cousins came down. Hey, all my cousins. <laughs> Why do New Zealand people always have so many cousins? What the fuck is with that? <laughs> well, it's not like that many people in New Zealand. So they've got to all be like at least cousins, haven't they? <laughs> <laughs> at, at the very least. If you're not at least a cousin, then... <laughs> That's so stupid. Uh, what effects are you using to shape your bass like that? Oh, dude, these are just clip edges, mate. They're just clip edges. Oh, you mean like how I synthesize them in the beginning? Uh, you can like go back on YouTube and watch all the all the videos of a uh, of me because I like wrote the whole song. Um, well, I did like basically how we did this is Father Funk sent me an idea. Which was like a really good idea to begin with. It probably could have just been a finished track. And then I was like, nah, fuck that. Like, I'm going to make it really cool. And then I started working on it and I posted like every session. I think almost every session of me working on this track on YouTube. So go to my YouTube channel. Follow us for the funky behavior. Oh, yeah, sweet. Thanks for following me, man. Um,. Fuck these clip edges, man. I should probably just do that off camera because it's going to take forever. Um, I might just call... I might... Like, I'll do that off camera and then I'll, like, tweak the sub and, like, no one wants to see me fucking fading clip edges forever. That's going to be stupid. But, like, yeah, I reckon this like track is, like... weird production fetish, isn't it? Watching that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you fade those edges, bro. <sighs> oh, fade those edges so good, bro. Oh, man. Follow us for the fucking... Yeah, oh, man. see, I'm getting more followers because, like, they just love to see the clip edges getting faded. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, you dirty bastard. <laughs> but, yeah, like... yourself. <laughs> yeah, I reckon this track is done, man. Like, I'll just do that, and then I'll um, get the sub sitting nice with the drums. Cool. And um, do a bit of a mix down. And um, hopefully I can get, like, a pretty stable level on the master without using the glue compressor. Yep. And then that'll be that. Are you going to get someone to master your album or should I just like... Yeah, 
probably, I mean, what if, I mean, do whatever you want with it, but I'll probably get a final master once all the tracks are done, just so they're all kind of, yeah, set together or whatever. But if you want to master it for your set, I guess that makes sense too. Yeah. What, what's Palmute saying here? Sounds like Mr. Bill's technique where he just switched through Zebra 2 presets and chop, out, chop the crap out of it. He had some preset. So apparently, this is what I did. I had some preset <laughs> bases that were baller, and then I made some massive bases, and then I dropped them through a bunch of flanger and chorus patches, presets, <laughs> and shit. And then he rendered it out like that and cut it out for like a whole day. And then you bust it all out through through a shoe to give it that oaky tombra at the end. <laughs> yeah, I resampled it through a shoe. <laughs> actually, um, no. actually, Palm, you don't know this, but um, all the bases, I I originally got like the starting sounds from from me like fucking your mother, and then I put them, in, <laughs> I resampled them into and stretched them out, um, and. Um, you know, just applied some post-processing and got some mad bass out of it. You didn't um, have to stretch out for long, though, because there's always already hours and hours of sounds. Yeah, hours and hours. <laughs> I've got enough material to actually write, like, another hundred albums of, um, of bass lines. <laughs> so, in there, Palmute, is um, your mother actually um, getting dicked by me. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, so I'm going to like just save that and then uh, I'll come back to it later off camera, but um, I think I'm just going to work on something else. I'm going to cool. stop recording. So if you're looking on YouTube, like thanks for watching and like go and check out um, Father Funk's music. I'll put links in the description. And yeah, that's Ooh. it for Slink's studio Follow session. Me, thanks for having me, dude. No worries, man. You can hang out if you want and like check out what I'm doing on my other tracks, but... Yeah, I'm going to call that an end for this one. So, yeah, peace out. All right, so it's the next day, and um, I decided to record a little section for the end of the video, for the end of the episode, um, just doing some of the things we talked about in the stream. So, um, let's jump into the project. Um, basically, we were talking about fading all the clip edges of the baseline, um, and I did that, and I colored them green as I was going, so I knew what I had done and what I hadn't done yet. Um, I did this bit as well, but I didn't color it green because I'm lazy. And um, basically, uh, I also talked about putting the sub into the drum bus. Now, the reason I did that is just so I can get a visual on the um, the drum, the relationship between the drums and the sub. And I wanted to see, you know, whether we were peaking and whatever um, after applying some side chain. Um, so let's have a listen to that. So you can see the frequency, like the signal is, is fairly stable, it's not too peaky. What can happen is like your, your kick drum will combine with the bass, like the bass of your kick drum will combine with the sub and, and push push uh, your levels like way out of control. So um, by doing a little bit of side chaining we can we can remedy that and then just by putting the sub into the drum bus we can we can see the combination of those two, two sig signals and, and try and get them as flat as we can without losing the um, the power of the sub um, <clears throat> and then also we wanted to um, work on the relationship between the sub and the bass group the bass group is all this stuff um, so we talked about frequency splitting and I ended up using a multiband dynamics and soloing the mid channel and disabling the high frequency split and setting the low to 120 so what that's giving us is a signal of 120 hertz and above and then on the sub I did the reverse where we <coughs> where we're getting 120 and below by soloing the low channel um, and that way the, the sub has room in combination with the bass um, and so we're sort of trying we're keeping a, a fairly flat we're keeping everything like you know we're giving it everything its own sort of area in the frequency spectrum um, and uh, I also sidechain the bass to give some room in the bass for the drums, like the big kicks and snares, which are really loud. Um, so we sidechain that a little bit. We sidechain the synth uh, group, and we also sidechained uh, one of the one of the instruments in here even more, just to give it a bit more of a pumping effect, just for add character, not for mastering reasons, just 
for uh, for for more for more character. Um, <clears throat> and we we side chained the guitar a little bit less. I uh, know oh roughly the same. The the bass we're we're not side chaining too much. The sub we're side chaining a little bit more. The, the brakes channel we also side chained a lot um, because there's kicks and snares at the same time as the kicks and snares in the, our drum meet, which is our big like like kicks and. So we wanted to duck the volume of that. Um, and also I took out some of the lows of the guitar because there was a little bit of bass in there and I didn't want that clashing with the sub. Uh, the horns, a little bit of side chaining again, and the effects channel, quite a lot of side chaining. Um, just so in the, in the breakdowns, there's like big, like <coughs> sweeps and, and booms and stuff. And we also have like a kick on this, on the beginning of that. And I didn't want them clashing and pushing the signal way over way over um, and peaking. So that's sort of how I set up the side chain. And you might be thinking, well, you could have just routed everything into one channel and then put one side chain on that. Um, but some things you don't need to side chain as much as others. So I feel like this way, <coughs> spending a little bit of time and doing it this way um, will result in a better sound. So also like I updated the kick and snare a little bit. So <clears throat> the snare used to sound like this, which sounds pretty good, honestly, but I made a new snare and oh, we ended up using that one. And I also made another snare, which I might use on another track. It's kind of cool. Um, and then, oh, let me just flip that back to the right one. And then the kick sounds like that. And it used to sound like this, which is kind of shitty. So went with that. Sounds a bit nice, a bit more punchy. Um, what else did we do? Yeah, so uh, if you remember in the stream, me and uh, Will were talking about dropping the volume of the drums at the very beginning. Um, I went a step further from that and applied a utility on the master chain and uh, we've done some automation. So I set the range of, of the gain knob to negative 3 dB to 0 dB. So this knob all the way down is negative 3 dB and all the way up is, is uh, 0 dB. So at the very start of the song, we have uh, negative 3 dB volume reduction, um, which basically creates a little bit more tension. And then when it drops, it feels more powerful because it's 3 dB louder. And 3 dB is like not very perceivable you won't be like, oh wow, look, someone turned the volume down like in the middle of the song. It's just enough to like uh, subconsciously make it feel just more powerful when you bring the volume back in. And then at the start of this breakdown, we have like a slow sort of re reduction in, in the volume um, because we want this first hit to be quite powerful and then we want things to sort of slide down and, and be quiet and then chill and then suddenly it like builds back up and let's have a listen to that actually. So that first hit was really bam, and then it slides down in volume. You can you can see the the, the master volume here. And it starts hitting around zero now. But there's still plenty of dynamic range there. And then we bring the volume up. suddenly we're back at full volume. I tried to like do the automation of this during that little um, uh, little gliss up thing. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so after I sort of did that automation, I opened up an Ozone, Isotope Ozone 5 and we started tweaking um, some of these things in here. So uh, what I ended up doing, I can just start this again. Actually, I'll, I'll save this one and I'll just make another one because I don't want to lose the changes. I think I got it sounding pretty good, but I can show you what I've done here. So I started off with a preset just to get things moving. The drum and bass and brakes master basic is, is um, a good preset to start with. And then we move this all the way up and we move this down. The character, I find setting that to clipping is uh, 
it sounds like it sounds bad, but uh, I think it like makes things like really punchy. It sounds good to me. I know that that word is meant to be bad, but um, I don't know. It sounds good to me. And then in the dynamics section, which looks really complicated, uh, we're actually not using the limiter or the the gate. You can see each band has a gate, compressor, and limiter. So we're not using the gate or the limiter. We're just using the compressors on these. So basically, we're just using it as a multiband compressor. Um, and then I just tweaked the uh, threshold on these to to get a sound I like. And I also like sort of moved the gain around almost using this as an EQ. <coughs> you know, if I felt like it had too much highs, then I'd slightly reduce the gain on the on the very high end of the uh, spectrum here. Um, and then at the same time, um, I was pulling down this threshold and, and looking at the RMS meter to, to try and get things under about three, just a little bit under three. Um, so, Here's what we ended up with. Here's the settings that we ended up with. Uh, we can listen to the song and have a look at it. Yeah, so it's just a little bit under three, sometimes four. That's okay. Like, I'm not going hardcore for that three RMS like a lot of people do, but it's it sounds good to me. I could probably even go a little bit more, to be honest. Let's go a little bit more. Yeah, I actually just heard a mistake. Um, there's a meant to be a vibrato on on uh, this one here. <clears throat> so <laughs> I must have tried removing that. I did remove some of the notes in here just to give a bit more room for the bass line, but there we go. That's a bit better. All right, yeah. So um, that's basically all I did. Um, just messed around with the. Uh, with the Eyes Depot Zone 5, um, updated the kicks and snares, and and now we're ready to um, to bounce it out and play it at a festival or whatever. But um, I wanted to sort of take a little bit of time and talk about like what people confuse. Like people are always people are always confusing like what a mix down is and what a, what mastering is, and they get them confused. So like all the stuff that we did here, like balancing the volumes and, and viewing the relationship between the sub and the drums and this drum bus and, and the relationship between the sub and the bass and, and frequency splitting and volume, you know, like that is all mixed down stuff. Um, and most, most mastering engineers won't do that for you because you usually just send them like a bounce of your master. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, you usually just send them a bounce of your master because... Uh, then they'll just um, try and EQ the sub and everything together. But if you have like a really muddy sub, like you have like all this bass stuff playing with the sub, like there's only so much you can do with EQing and, and compression and stuff. So really like the majority of um, the work that you should be doing to make your song sound great is in this mix down stage. Um, you know, after you've written some cool stuff as well, obviously. But this is really... Like the mix town is really important. Mas people put too much like value on the mastering and like, you know, I'm going to write a shitty muddy bass sounding track and send it to a mastering engineer and they're just going to magically make it sound good. Like that's not the case. Um, but again, it does, it does, um, it does depend on your mastering engineer. Like I know some mastering engineers do help with the mix down, but um, you're probably paying them lots of money. Um, some, I know, like, I think the guy who mastered the, um, the Flume album, he actually helped with some of the production and because, uh, because Flume, you know, he like sent, um, the mastering engineer, like a, a project like this, a whole project, um, and the mastering engineer was like, okay, I can kind of see what the artist was going for here. But seriously, that snare is kind of shit. So he like would sub in a nice snare or, or that crash was um, shitty. Let's add a different crash or this, this synth sound even is um, a bit like crispy on the high end. So I'm going to redesign that sound and, and try and go for something very similar um, and or maybe even layer it underneath the existing one or something like that. And, and they can really like some mastering engineers will go right in and, and really help you with the track like that. 
Um, but I'm, I'm pretty sure most will just take a bounce of your master and then just apply some compression and EQ and stuff like that. They might run it, run it through some outboard gear that sounds nicer to give it that analog warmth or whatever. But really, as um, producers that are basically like working on your own, <clears throat> you should be working really hard on the mix down. Um, and so tricks to help with the mix down is obviously um, just getting things grouped nicely so you're not dealing with like a shit ton of like fucking channels like it's insane if you're trying to deal with that so just try and group similar sounds together um, and then you know balance them side chain them and just view the relationship between some of them EQ them so that they have their own space in the spectrum um, and then you should be get you know like with a bit of practice and experience you can start to get your mix down sounding really good um, cool so that's that's it for this series guys I hope you enjoyed it um, and any comments and feedback, let me know. But otherwise, have a fucking sweet day. Peace.